In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use what we know about aromaticity and doing an aromaticity analysis on a molecule to assess reactivity, acidity, and basicity. You've already learned the stability trend for aromaticity, so the most stable is going to be a molecule that's aromatic, followed by non-aromatic, and then the least stable is going to be something that's anti-aromatic. So we're going to use this as kind of our way to analyze the progress of a reaction. So if we undergo a reaction and something goes from anti-aromatic to non-aromatic, or anti-aromatic to aromatic, or even non-aromatic to aromatic, going in that direction, the molecule's becoming more stable. So that is going to be a favored reaction. Okay, but on the other hand, if you try to do something in the opposite direction and convert something that's more stable into something less stable, like going from aromatic to non-aromatic, aromatic to anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic to anti-aromatic, that's going to be an unfavored reaction. So keeping this in mind, we're going to look at some examples. In this first example, we're comparing two ionization reactions um, and figuring out which one will happen at the fastest rate. So this is something you learned about with SN1. That was an ionization where we lose the leaving group. So if we draw the products, Here we get a seven-membered ring with the carbocation plus the bromide anion. In our second example, once you lose the leaving group, you get this carbocation, again, plus the bromide anion. So now what you can do is classify your starting materials and products. So in the first example, we have a ring with no double bonds, no p orbitals. That's just, um, it's non-conjugated, so that's non-aromatic. In the product, we have a carbocation, but this still isn't a conjugated ring, so it's still non-aromatic. Okay, now let's do the same thing in the second example. If we look at our first ring here, we have three pi bonds, but it's not a completely conjugated ring because there's not a p orbital right here. So the starting material is not aromatic. The product, if we look at this, now we have a completely conjugated ring, because remember, we put a p orbital everywhere, you have a double bond. The carbocation's in a p orbital. So we have a completely conjugated ring. Count your electrons, there's two, four, six pi electrons, which is a Huckel's number. So this ring in the product is actually aromatic. Okay, so the top reaction you know, isn't terrible. It's not like you're going from non-aromatic to anti-aromatic, but there's still nothing especially favored about it. Versus the second example, you're going from something non-aromatic to something aromatic. So you're actually gaining instability there. So the bottom reaction is going to be the faster reaction. In this problem, we're given two molecules and a particular hydrogen have been drawn in, and we want to consider the hydrogen in each and figure out which would be the most acidic. 
So if you're doing an acid-base reaction, let's just react this with, um, we'll use a strong base, I'll just use NaNH2. So the base would be NH2 minus. All right, to that, let's take one of these protons and we'll draw the conjugate base and the conjugate acid. If you want to draw the sodium, you can do that as well. All right, so there's the product for that reaction. Um, if we look at this, our starting material, the ring, is non-conjugated, so that's non-aromatic. The product, you don't have p orbitals here or here, so the product's also non-aromatic. Okay, now let's look at the second molecule. We'll do the same thing. React it with this amide base. Deprotonate. Okay, so uh, here, we get the negative charge. I'm also going to draw in the lone pair this time. Um, we'll see why in a second. And there's your products. So again, the first molecule, it does have some conjugation, but it's still non-aromatic because it's not completely conjugated. But in the product, now we can put this lone pair in a p orbital to bring it into conjugation. If we do that, now every atom has a p orbital. So it's a completely conjugated ring. But does it have the right number of electrons for aromaticity? So the double bonds too. This double bonds two, and the lone pair is two. Six pi electrons, that's a Huckel's number. So this product is aromatic. So because we're going from something non aromatic to aromatic, this is a more favored acid-base reaction, meaning these protons are much more acidic. Just to give you an idea of the magnitude of the difference here, you know, a typical hydrocarbon, like this first molecule, the pK is going to be somewhere around 50 or above compared to these hydrogens, which lead us to an aromatic pro product, the pK is about 16. That's around the same pK as um, water or an alcohol. So that's incredibly more acidic. In this final example, we're asked to compare the basicity of these two heterocycles. The first is pyridine, the second is pyrrole. And we know that lone pairs can act as bases, and we have a lone pair on the nitrogen and pyridine, a lone pair on the nitrogen and pyrrole. And if you add an acid to this, and we'll keep it very simple and just use a proton, That lone pair can take the proton. We'll protonate the nitrogen, at which point it gets a positive charge. Right, same thing happens in pyrrole.
already has one hydrogen. Now we have a second, and it bears a positive charge. So now, if we compare the starting material and product for aromaticity, in the first case, we have two, four, six pi electrons. We don't count the lone pair on this nitrogen for aromaticity because the nitrogen already has a p orbital that's part of this double bond. So there's no need to try to put this lone pair in a p orbital because that's kind of double dipping on your electron count. Okay, so the starting material is aromatic. Once we get to the product, we still have two, four, six pi electrons. Even though nitrogen's lone pair was used up, it wasn't involved in the aromaticity to begin with, so it doesn't really change anything. This is still an aromatic system. So, you know, there's no huge jump in stability, but there's also no real loss in stability either. So now let's look at pyrrole. In the case of pyrrole, there's not a double bond on the nitrogen. So that means if we want to consider aromaticity, we need to think about that lone pair being in a p orbital. If we do that, Carbons with the double bonds have p orbitals. The nitrogen has a p orbital with a lone pair. It is completely conjugated. Since that lone pair is in a p orbital, we're going to count it for the pi electron count. So we have two in the double bond, two in the other double bond, two in the lone pair, six pi electrons. That's going to be an aromatic ring. Okay, so now we get to the product, and if we look at this one, now there's no longer a lone pair on the nitrogen. There's just this double bond and this double bond. So we've taken the lone pair that was part of the aromatic ring and essentially used it up. So we lost the aromaticity there. So this is a non-aromatic ring. Now, a lot of times people want to incorrectly classify this as anti-aromatic because they say, well, we have two pi bonds, a positive charge, four pi electrons, anti-aromatic. The problem is that this nitrogen doesn't have a p orbital. If you look at the nitrogen, it has four groups. It's sp3. All that nitrogen has is four sp3 orbitals. One sp3 orbital makes up this bond, one makes up this bond, one this bond, and one this bond. That nitrogen does not have a p orbital, so it's not completely conjugated. That's the difference between a positive charge on a heteroatom versus a positive charge on a carbon. A positive charge on a carbon is in a p orbital. That's not the case with these heteroatoms. So with this, you're going from aromatic to non-aromatic. You're decreasing in stability. So this will be a slower reaction. The top even though there's no huge gain, you're not getting worse. So that'll be a faster reaction. So pyridine is the stronger base.